You were invited here to the 13th International Humanitarian Law Roundtable, formerly Dialogues. Did you have any expectations? Did, did your boss set you aside and say, here's what to expect? He did to a degree because I had a lot of questions. I didn't know uh, what the roundtable was about. Um, I'm a little embarrassed to say I didn't know what Chautauqua itself was about. So I did some research to sort of... Uh, uh, you know, make up for my ignorance about it uh, in terms of the educational movement and, uh, uh, you know, that it's, I, it's very interesting. I, th I, th I think it's uh, quite fascinating, this idea about, um, you know, uh, becoming the best person you possibly can be in terms of spirituality and, uh, and your outlook on the world and understanding other perspectives and breeding empathy and you know all of those kinds of things and I think that that's nicely embodied in Chautauqua. So I, I did that on my own um, but yeah I spoke internally with um, uh, my boss and uh, some other people in the office who have had the pleasure of doing it before and they all said you're going to love it and I really do I really I'm having the, the time of my life here I'm really enjoying it so well, I'm, I'm it's great delighted you, you're you're here uh, but one doesn't get into the <laughs> international law community normally right every one of my interviews has really taken a circuitous path so I'd be yeah. curious how what was yours well, mine was meandering. Uh, there's no doubt about that. So um, I always wanted to do uh, international human rights. That's what I was focused on was human rights law. And um, so immediately after law school, that's what I did. I went to Bosnia. Uh, for By the way, where were you born? What's your native country? So Canada, Canada. Uh, from Toronto. And um, I knew I wanted to do human rights from the age of 12. I knew I wanted to do human rights, you know, uh, I always told people that I was going to do uh, international human rights law and uh, it just seemed like that was my course. And uh, so after law school, um, I was finishing up my law degree in Mexico on a scholarship uh, through NAFTA and uh, my name was put forward for this uh, OSC position in uh, Bosnia and so I th thought, why not? Uh, so immediately after convocating from law school, I went to Bosnia and uh, stayed there for two years. Um, I was intending only to stay for an internship uh, about three months and then I got hired on, so I stayed. Um, and then that sort of solidified my interest in human rights uh, law. Uh, in the interim in Canada, uh, you have to do the articling process. Uh, which is a little bit different than the United States. It's sort of a leftover from the British uh, tradition. You have to article for 10 months in a firm, like an apprenticeship. Uh, and I didn't do mine uh, because I never intended to practice uh, domestically and uh, I certainly never intended to do criminal law. I never mooted uh, in university. I never thought that I would be a prosecutor. So I just, I never pursued it. Uh, and then, um, uh, after Bosnia, I stayed in uh, Europe for another six years or so doing various things. And then I started to get these progressively more threatening letters from the Law Society saying that their uh, patients had sort of run out with me and either I'd come back in my article uh, or I was going to have to go back to law school. So I decided, well, that's it. Uh, it corresponded with when I got engaged with my husband, who's also from Toronto. We moved back. Uh, I articled uh, with Crown Law Office Criminal, which is a fantastic um, appellate litigation office in uh, Toronto. Found out that I loved criminal law, loved litigation, uh, and so I stayed with that for 13 years until uh, my current position. You never got involved in the appellate work uh, dealing with the former mayor of Toronto, did you? No, <laughs> no, wide berth, wide berth. <laughs> no, I did not. Well, that's, yeah. uh, that got to be such a standing joke down here. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure it did, uh, I'm sure it did. Well, so that's why we can't point fingers at the Americans, right? Oh, because uh, man, everybody's can't got their, yeah. live in glass houses, right? So you find yourself through this appellate process and you were in Bosnia. While in Bosnia, did you, do much research with regards to the atrocities during the Bosnia-Herzegovina 
process and what was going on with the ICTY? Uh, to an extent, uh, we weren't uh, that active at the time. I was focused more on um, uh, ensuring Bosnian laws, uh, I myself together with many, many other people, uh, were focused on ensuring that Bosnian laws met uh, European standards in, in order for them to uh, join the EU. Um, so I was more focused on that, but the ICTY work was just kind of heating up around that time. So it was 1999 to 2002, uh, really sort of just heating up at that time. It was kind of in its infancy. What was uh, Milosevic, had he been arrested? Yes. Uh, had he been arrested? That's a good question. I don't know. I'd have to go back and look. Uh, he was certainly no longer in power at that time. And Milosevic certainly yeah. ran the land. Yeah, that that's right. Exactly. Exactly. So you find your way back to the Toronto Maple mm -hmm. Leafs, right? <laughs> yeah. A, a. Yeah. A. I do actually say A. Okay. <laughs> so when you drive by around here and you see Tim Hortons yeah. coffee, you... Uh, yeah, I get a little nostalgic. It's yeah. a little pang in the heart. 30% of the time, you, it's undrinkable. But 70%, <laughs> it's pretty good. <laughs> well, we, uh, Buffalo Sabres is our neck of the woods yeah. here. We lay claim to Horton, but, it's, but you have a better claim. Yeah. Uh, so, but at some point, and as of 2019, you are the Senior Appeals Counsel and Head of the Legal Advisory and Appeals Section within the Office of the Prosecutor in the Special Tribunal for Lebanon. That's right. 2018, that's a typo. Okay, typo. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, then you're an old pro. Right. So, for the camera, yep. two things. One, could you explain the Special Tribunal for mm -hmm. Lebanon? What what caused it to be created because <coughs> students who met you tonight might be curious. Sure. Uh, well, we were created by the uh, Security Council, um, and uh, this is, uh, I think we're in our ninth year right now. Um, the uh, primary jurisdiction that we have involves the um, uh, targeted uh, terrorism assassination of uh, Prime Minister Rafi Hariri. Uh, that occurred on uh, Valentine's Day 2005, uh, resulted in his death, of course, along with the death of 21 other people and uh, injuries to numerous others. Uh, that's our inherent jurisdiction under the statute. Uh, this, the uh, Security Council decided that this was a threat to international peace and security, and so we were created primarily for that. Um, having said that, we have uh, permissive jurisdiction, sort of secondary jurisdiction, uh, for cases uh, that are connected to the uh, Hariri attack, and that goes from October 2004 until December 2005. And uh, currently we're investigating uh, three of those cases, we call them the connected cases. Uh, so uh, the primary core are the Hariri attacks, uh, and that has accumulated in the Ayash et al. Uh, case, uh, where we had closing submissions last September, and we're currently waiting for the judgment. And just as a process, uh There'd be a judgment and then inevitably there's appeals. Is that where you kick in? Yeah, so uh, somebody will probably be appealing something yeah. uh, in the case. Uh, of course, we don't have the judgment yet, so I can't say. Uh, there's a possibility that the prosecution could be appealing um, instead of or at the same time as uh, the four parties um, who uh, are on trial. Uh, there was a fifth, Bajardine, but he's, uh, he's deceased, so those uh, proceedings were stayed against him. Uh, but for the other four, if there are convictions, we could have multiple appeals going at the same time. In, in common law and in Canada, if there were an acquittal, I don't know that we can appeal. I mean, we appeal from that. Right. I, I don't know that in the United States. It seemed like you can't. Uh, it's a little different in the United States. In Canada, we can, yeah, can. Okay. but we're one of the few jurisdictions that can, and so we exercise that very judiciously in deciding whether or not to appeal. We can, Australia can, uh, but there's a lot of jurisdictions where you can't. In international law, that seems to be a normal that consideration, just as Fatou Ben Sudan mm -hmm. are contemplating the acquittals of, mm -hmm. of appealing that. Right. Uh, errors of um, you know fact. Uh, uh, errors of law, but it has to go to a miscarriage of justice in order for us to be able to appeal. Just that, and maybe for just education, because these 
are you have jurisdiction over the defendants who are in absentia that's right did just out of a curiosity uh the last time of note that occurred was in nuremberg that's right in one case yeah, that's right that's right does, was that was that part that history right was that part of your jurisprudence uh, at this point, not so much. Our, uh, the decision uh, to allow us to proceed in absentia uh, was in part based on civil law jurisdictions where there are in absentia proceedings. They're all a little different from each other and they're different from us. Uh, but you can do it in France, you can do it in, um, uh, in the Netherlands, uh, in some cases in Italy. There are different countries where you're allowed to do that with different um, uh, legal consequences. Uh, and then in Lebanon, of course, as well. And uh, what we do at the STL, it's uh, um, unique because we apply Lebanese domestic law uh, in conjunction with uh, international criminal law. So it's, it's quite unique in that respect. Having s perhaps studied uh, comparative laws, it, it, do you find that it's working? I mean, we have we, part of what we'll talk about today is uh, tomorrow the integration of domestic law with mm -hmm. the international laws. Uh, is that something that you, you feel comfortable that it, that process is working? Where you're joining the two? Uh, I certainly think so. Uh, at this point, when I joined the STL, I wasn't sure how that would work. I had never worked in that kind of uh, bifurcated system before, uh, but it does work well for us. Um, so uh, in terms of criminal law, we apply uh, Lebanese uh, criminal law unless there is um, a gap or an inconsistency um, that we, where we may need to explore uh, international criminal law anymore. Um, but it, it does dovetail nicely. It's, it's worked quite well um, to date. The last real question, uh, Michelle, and thank you for mm -hmm. taking the time. My pleasure. Did, did you uh, pause at the brick at the Robert Jackson Center <laughs> where it says Norm Farrell? I did. I, I think I inadvertently stepped on it and then I paused. <laughs> <laughs> thank, thank you. Yeah, yeah. My pleasure.